Hello everyone, welcome back to Full Grown Gaming's Let's Play of Kingdom Hearts. In this episode, I kind of want to start off by going to the item shop, because we're kind of barren on items, as far as like potions, and also I kind of want to buy, you know, the upgraded weapons that are available for Donald and Goofy, which are the Morning Star Farm. Did I really just say Morning Star Farms? At least I cut myself off a little bit. If you don't know what Morning Star Farms is, it's like a... a a food item brand or whatever, but anyway, Morningstar and Warhammer are J Donald's two options. The thing is, I'm, it says a hammer made for combat. I'm not sure if that's because I don't like Donald to use offensive, you know, physical attacks. And look, it also reduces MP by one. On the other hand, the Morningstar, you know, it heightens magic power. So I'm not sure why the Warhammer is more expensive than the Morningstar because Donald is pretty much going to be our mage for the game. Why would you want something that reduces his magic power? Now, the only thing is, I'm not sure if that increases his magic ability as well as far as, like, damage. But anyway, I'm going to go with the Morningstar. Down here for Goofy, we have the option between the Smasher and the Stout Shield. The Stout Shield is more of, like, a defensive shield, and the Smasher is more of an offensive shield, if that makes any sense. I'm going to go with the, with the Smasher here, especially on normal, because Goofy's not really going to be in such dire straits that he needs, you know, a way, way high defense. So I'm going to go ahead and buy the offensive shield for him. And speaking of dire straits, one song that has been stuck in my head for weeks is Money For Nothing. If you guys have never heard Money For Nothing by Dire Straits, one of my favorite songs of all time. I even linked it on Twitter a couple days ago. Now here, guys, I'm not gonna do, read any of the tutorials or anything because I don't like tutorials, so I can only imagine how it would be if I tried to like explain the tutorials to you guys like word for word. The funny thing is right here, look how easy it is to move the cursor. The first time I played the game, I didn't own it. I played it at my friend's house and I was like, oh, I can't move. What do I do? So I had to wait till the next day for my friend to show me that you actually have to use the analog stick to move the cursor. For whatever reason, I just didn't try that and I was trying to use the D-pad, which does not move the cursor. Now we have two options here. We can either go down here, which is, I don't want to, you know, spoil it or anything, but over here is probably a little bit easier to start off with. And I think what they wanted you to start off with. Now here is another tutorial. I'm not gonna, like I said, not gonna read all this because it's pretty basic stuff. I mean, basically to get between worlds, you have to use the gummy ship. The gummy ship is not, I like the gummy ship. Uh, let me just start off by saying that. I like the gummy ships, like the this mini game here, and I also like how you can make your own. I don't know if you guys saw when I was explaining the, the menu mishap where I didn't realize to use the analog stick. You can actually go into the gummy garage by pressing square and you can make your own gummy ship. As you can see right now, this is kind of like a, a basic shape, you know, but you can make whatever you want. And these diamonds or crystals or whatever, or you see G, Protect G, all that kind of stuff down there. Those are actually parts for ships. And you can use all those parts to make, like I said, make your own ship. And speaking of your own ship, you can actually get ships that are not your own by destroying the other ships. How many times am I going to say ship and like, I seem to do that a lot, but anyway, some of the, you know, enemy gummy ships will drop blueprints. These probably will. Or not, you know, as soon as I try to explain something. Maybe I already got the blueprint for that ship or something. But it was like a blue circle with some sort of symbol in the middle of it. I think there's another one later on that'll do it as well. But you can actually get, you know, the gummy ship, enemy gummy, enemy gummy ship blueprints and use them, at, you know, for your own. Also, I believe in Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. By the way, I don't appreciate the fact how Japan got, you know, the Final Mix versions of the games and stuff like that. Because there's a... Man, it was too far away for me to get. It was down there in the bottom right, that blueprint. But Japan, if you guys don't know, there's another one. Please don't be too low. There we go. Got the still. But anyway, for the fifth time, I'm trying to start this. Japan got what was called the final mix versions of, like, pretty much, what, Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, and, you know, Birth by Sleep. I'm not sure about the other ones or whatever, but we didn't get that, and that is a pain because there's so much extra content in those games. But anyway, here's Wonderland. I think we're going to get a cutscene right off the bat. Oh my word, what's this? I'm late, I'm late, I'm late! 
Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear! I'm here! I should be there! Oh! I'm late! I'm late! I'm late! Oh, the queen should have my head for sure! I, we guys, obviously we're in Wonderland. Look how, you know, mystical this place is and stuff like that. We're going to be meeting up with that rabbit in a second. And look, here's a green trinity. I don't think we've shown those, or I've shown those in the Let's Play so far. Mainly because we haven't run into any. But we can't do all the trinities yet. After you defeat certain worlds, you get the ability to do other trinities. Now, I think there's going to be another cutscene here. Well, that was the most awesome cutscene, wasn't it? Like, two steps in and nothing happens. But over here, the first thing you really want to do is push the bed out of the way. Because behind it, there is actually a hole that we're going to have to go to in a minute. And I think we get to talk to the door here. How did he get so small? Uh, no, you're simply too big. <laughs> that tracks! Mm. <sighs> Must you be so loud? You woke me up. <sighs> Good morning. Good night. I need a bit more sleep. Wait, mm. what do we have to do to grow small? Why don't you try the bottle? Over there. Alright, so we can use these bottles to grow small, as Sora said. That whole cutscene was kind of weird to me. First of all, Goofy was trying to be nice. You know, good morning, and he's like, good night. And then also, what was the other thing that happened that I wanted to point out, but I forgot? Like, I don't like to talk during cutscenes. Let me go ahead and just grow small and I'll think about it. I think it was, oh, Sora said something like, how did he get so small? And then the doorknob was like, no, you're too big. To me, Sora wasn't saying, I don't know exactly how to explain what I'm trying to say here, but Sora wasn't, you know, mentioning the fact that he was too big. Alright, so now, oh man, I forgot there's gonna be Heartless in here, you know, apparently when we're big there's no Heartless for whatever reason. And I don't think we've encountered these enemies yet, but regardless, this enemy is called a Red Nocturne. I believe that's how you pronounce it, and because it's actually the same word, if you guys watched or have ever played Ocarina of Time, you know, on the Nintendo 64, the that song, the Nocturne of Shadow, it's the same exact word, so I'm guessing it's pronounced the same way. Anyway, as you can tell, they use fire magic. And what is the one magic spell we have? Fire. So if we try to use fire on them, our only magic spell, it'll actually heal them, so we have to use physical attacks right now. Or, you know, rely on Donald and Goofy. I think eventually we're gonna get the Blizzard spell. Actually, I think maybe even in this episode. And if we use the Blizzard spell on these guys, we actually get tech points. And also, I think you can deflect their fire spells back at them, and you'll get tech points as well. So, those guys are, you know, a pretty decent way of leveling up. Oh, and another thing I can't believe I forgot. There's a Lucid Shard, by the way. I think I've got a couple of those in the past. I... What is that treasure chest over there? Is it gonna be another Lucid Shard? Yes, it is. Now, I don't think they dropped any bubbles. Maybe that's because I have full magic. Let me go ahead and use a, a couple fire spells so I don't have full magic. Hopefully, I run into another enemy. There we go. This guy should drop what looks like bubbles. Or not, like, maybe only the Red Nocturnes drop them. Maybe only enemies that use magic drop them, I'm not sure. But if I don't run into them again, I'll just tell you what they do. Basically, those are just, like, MP balls, just like the HP balls. So, this game is really lenient as far as keeping you full. This girl is the culprit. There's no doubt about it. And the reason is... Because I say so, that's why... That is so unfair. Well, have you anything to say in your defense? Of course. I've done absolutely nothing wrong. You may be queen, but I'm afraid that doesn't give you the right to be so... so mean. Silence! You dare defy me? Hey guys, we should help her out. We're outsiders, so wouldn't that be muddling? Muddling! 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's against the rules. The court finds the defendant guilty as charged for the crimes of assault and attempted theft of my heart. <gasps> Off with her head! No, no! Oh, please! Hold it right there! Who are you? How dare you interfere with my court? Excuse me, but we know who the real culprit is. Uh-huh. It's the heart one. Anyway, she's not the one you're looking for. That's nonsense. Have you any proof? Uh. All right, so bring me evidence of Alice's innocence. Fail, and it's off with all of our heads. So apparently, this whole trial thing is really weird to me. Mainly, all right, so when the Chesh, not Cheshire Cat, I forgot what this rabbit's name is or whatever, but he said something like, you know, the court is in session or whatever, and Alice was like, oh, I'm on trial? Like, she's on the stand, of course she's on trial. Apparently she didn't realize, but we can actually come talk to her. Who are you? I'm Sora. I'm Goofy, and that's Donald. Pleased to meet you, though I do wish it were under better circumstances. I'm sorry you got mixed up in this nonsense. Why are you on trial in the first place? I should like to know the very same thing. Apparently I was guilty from the moment I took the stand. That's crazy. So if we keep talking to her, eventually we get to learn why she was here in the first place. So, where are you from? Hmm, curious, I can't quite remember. You see, I found this mysterious rabbit hole. When I tried to peek inside, I tumbled in head over heels, and I found myself here. So you're from another world. That's funny. Maybe you don't need a ship then. I don't get it. What do you mean, another world? Enough! The defendant will be silent. So, I, for some reason I found that particularly funny because Donald's like, what do you mean you don't need a ship? I don't get it. Oh, if only I hadn't peeked inside that rabbit hole. I guess I'm a bit too curious for my own good. I asked this Cheshire cat how to get home, and he told me to ask the queen. So I came here to see her, and I was arrested. So that is pretty much why she was here in the first place. I never talked to Alice when I was a kid, so I was like, why was she on trial? I never realized. Apparently she was lost here. She tried to talk to the queen, and she got thrown in jail. So when we go in here, I think there might be another cutscene. Well, this game really likes to, you know, fake you out with the cutscenes. I thought that was going to be a cutscene, but who are you? Who indeed? Poor Alice. Soon to lose her head, and she's not guilty of a thing. Hey, if I know who the culprit is, tell us. If you know who the culprit is, tell us. The Cheshire Cat has all the answers, but doesn't always tell. The answer, the culprit, the cat all lie in darkness. Wait! They've already left the forest. I won't tell which exit. There are four pieces of evidence in all. Three are a cinch to find. The fourth is tricky. Big reward if you find them all. Should we trust him? To trust or not to trust? I trust you'll decide. Alright, Cheshire Cat doesn't really help us whatsoever, but there are a whole lot of enemies here, and that is kind of a problem when you, you know, remember the fact that you can't open treasure chests, you can't do trinities, you can't do really anything unless, you know, the enemies are all dead around you. Unless, basically, unless that menu in the bottom left is yellow, or blue. See, you know what, I'm mixing up my colors again. But if it's not blue, then you can't actually do anything as far as, like, opening stuff or going into the menu. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care- I, if this guy isn't the last one, I'm probably gonna have to speed it up or something. Oh, another thing. The fire spell is actually pretty useful because you can attack enemies from farther away without having to chase them down after a combo or whatever. Now, I believe... Yes, yeah, so this thing right here, I think if we use a, a potion on it, it'll give us something in return. And we get a high potion. And these are the bubbles I was talking about earlier that replenish your MP. But over here in these pink, like, what looks like a box that maybe a birthday cake would be in or something like that, but if we open it... We find footprints, and that is one of the, you know, pieces of evidence that we have to find to, you know, make Alice 
to make the queen, I should say, not, you know, convict Alice, I guess, of whatever she did. The thing is, how do you keep footprints in a box? I mean, did she step in wet cement or something like that and they just cut it out, you know, like they have literal footprints or something like that? Because otherwise that makes no sense at all. But I guess this is Wonderland. Alright, took care of them real quick. Now, I'm probably going to be doing that a lot, especially, I won't really do it if there's no reason to. Like, if there's nothing I have to open, I'll, I'll probably just fight them or whatever. But if I really want to get to, you know, progress the story, I probably will have to do that quite a bit in this game. Over here we have, I believe, yep, antenna. Actually, I believe nothing. I didn't know what was in there. I forgot. But actually, I should probably go back up there. I think there's another item up there, and the camera is acting really weird right now. And by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, the left trigger, and, or the left L2 and R2 move the camera, and if you press them both at the same time, it centers it right behind Sora again. But over there, I think we can make this jump. Alright, I didn't actually think that was going to work, but I, what is in here? Don't remember, let's try. Thunder G, which I think is a gummy ship piece. So, I guess we'll be using that on our gummy ship eventually. But, what was I going to say? Oh, that chest over there had that keyhole thing on it, just like that thing in the... You know, the hotel back in Traverse Town. So does that mean if Yuffie had never told us about, you know, being able to open stuff with our Keyblade, we wouldn't have been able to open that? I'm not sure. Over here, there's another one. I think this is going to be our Dalmatians. Yeah, first 16, 17, and 18 Dalmatians. Which might not make sense. Like, when you collect Dalmatians in this game, it's not necessarily, like, the order. Like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's, like, groups of three... And it could be anywhere from 1 to 99, so it's kind of weird like that. Now, I believe, where's the other one? I think we need to go into the Bizarre Room, which is the room that we started off in with that keyhole or whatever. There we go. Now we're going to fall right here, open it. What I like to do, oh my goodness. Open the chest, thank you. I was going to say, I thought maybe, you know, some Heartless were going to appear or something and I wouldn't be able to open it. But apparently what was in there was a stench. So that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense either. But I guess somehow that means... By the way, the stench, the footprints, the antenna, all that kind of stuff, what exactly does that mean as far as the case goes? Like, how does that prove Alice is not guilty? I don't know. Now, another... We found three pieces of evidence, you know, to this point. Oh my... Why? Alright, took quick work of them. Took care of them quickly, maybe I should say it that way. But the Cheshire Cat said there were four, and there are... It doesn't look like there's any obvious pieces of evidence left. So if we examine this flower, give me a potion and I'll make you bigger. And by the way, that red one over there, you can give it an ether and I think it gives you a camping set. But I don't... Do I have any ethers? I might have some, but I'm not going to waste ethers. Now, if we give this thing a potion, you will... Oh my... I do that all the time. I waste potions all the time trying to do that. You actually have to select the flower in the menu to actually use the, the potion on the thing. Now, what this is, I never really did this as a kid either. You have to step on this log over here. And by the way, what was that text box? See ya? What is that referring to? Now over here, I think to become a, you know, small again, we have to hit the tree and lock on to that little seed thing up there, which is ripe enough to be picked and eaten, take it down, and that, for some reason, eating this thing will turn us back into, you know, a, a small Sora for whatever reason. Now, you guys saw when I hit the tree, it turned like that. I'm not really sure what the point of that is, because as far as I know, I've gotten all the items in this area. Oh, how did I forget this trinity? I think this trinity gives you a lot of items. Yeah, I was going to say a potion, and I think it might be, maybe one of those is a camping set, I'm not sure. Ether and a tent, so close enough. If I was really, you know, struggling in the game, I might use the ether to get a camping set or whatever, but like I said, I haven't even come close to dying or anything, so I'm going to keep all the items I have right now. But what that... You know, stomping on that stump did down there was make this appear right here so we can actually jump up here to get into another entrance into the bizarre room. Which is not, still not, you know, intuitive. Like, where am I supposed to go? There is a, a chest over there or a box or whatever. And you have to jump from here. Oh, knock Donald off. But you have to jump over there from here. And almost every time I fail. Whoa, that was close. I made it though. Now, I'm not sure what's in here either. Claw marks. So I guess all these things are, you know, characteristics of Heartless, I guess. Well, look what you found. Nice going. Now we can save Alice. Don't be so sure. She may be innocent, but what about you? What do you mean? I won't tell, but I'll give you something. And we attain the power of ice, the magic spell Blizzard. So now we can take down those, you know, red nocturnes with relative ease. And I wonder, oh, I was going to say, I wonder what would happen if I fell into this pot, but it's actually a two-dimensional thing on the floor. 
I, now that we have all of the evidence, I believe, that is available here. So I'm going to go ahead and go back in here. And Oh, I thought there was going to be a cutscene here, but I think we have to present the evidence first, you know, to the Queen. And I think to present the evidence, I was always like, oh, how do I give the evidence to her? Because if you jump up here, you can actually jump on top of her podium thing. She gets mad at you. How dare you stand there? But you actually have to talk to one of these guys. Now show me what you have found! Well, that's certainly a lot of evidence, but I'm still not impressed. Cards, bring forth my evidence! So she gets one little tiny box, and I have four pieces of evidence, and yet, what she's going to make us do is pick one present, or one- what am I ta- I think I accidentally read one thing to present that she was saying, and I- my mind came up with a present. But anyway, we have to pick one box, and depending on what is in the box is, you know, what happens. If we pick one of the pieces of evidence we collected, you know, nothing really happens, except we- Well, basically, we still have to get in a fight, but if we pick a box, there's one box that has Donald and Goofy in it. Hopefully, it's not this one. Okay, good. See, there's a Heartless in that one. Which means that we actually get to start off the fight with Donald and Goofy in a second. But, evidence shows that Alice is innocent, and the Queen doesn't like it too much. Silence! I'm the law here! Article 29, anyone who defies the Queen is guilty! That's crazy! Seize them at once! So, regardless of what you pick, like I said, you still have to get in a fight. And the fight here is kind of weird. I'll show you, yeah, it's like a guard house kind of thing. I'm not sure exactly what the point of this boss fight is, but if you had picked the box with Donald and Goofy in it, what happens is you start off the fight with Donald and Goofy in, like, cages over here, and you have to get them out, you know, to make the fight a little bit easier. I was gonna say, is Donald really down already? But what you can do is actually set the queen on fire, and somehow, like, look what happens to her. Oh, well, in a minute, I think, come on, set on fire. In a second, I think she, like, goes belly up, and, like, she's there we go, that's what I wanted to see. Well, I didn't want to see it, don't take that the wrong way. But, what that does is get the cards off of your back just a tiny bit. It gives you another, like, couple seconds to attack this guardhouse without actually having to worry about the, you know, the cards attacking you. And I don't think you can even kill the, the cards or whatever. Wow, that went down fast. But, what, you, what, what happens if you do enough damage to the cards, I think they go kind of like unconscious or whatever, but like I said, I don't think you ever really get to kill them outright. There we go, that was actually really fast, I'm surprised, but I think we might get a cutscene here. She must have gotten kidnapped while we were fighting. You fools! Find the one who's behind this! I don't care how! Where in the world could Alice have possibly gone? I'm not entirely sure. But in the next episode of Let's Play Kingdom Hearts, I think we might get an inkling of where she went, and hopefully we'll be able to seal up the wrongdoing that's been going on here by the Queen. So I'll see you guys back for the next episode of Let's Play Kingdom Hearts.